Okay, let's get. Uh, let's get started. Good morning. Uh, let's start with a, a reminder about the assessment because I know that's that's important for you. So as we agreed, we have a final written exam, but if you are satisfied with your grade before exam, you don't go to an exam. So we have a twenty percent. Very more people. We have 20% of points uh, for so-called in-class participation. So this is your participation during both lectures and seminars, plus uh, plus short quizzes that that we will have sometimes in class. Uh, so this is your participation, 20%, and 40% are homeworks. Um, I decided that you will have five big uh, homeworks projects uh, on which you work in small groups. So you receive the first one was the paper of Armantia Bolin. You receive a maximum of 20 points for, for each homework. Uh, and this uh, the sum of these homeworks form another 40%. So then uh, you have this uh, the maximum of uh, uh, 150 points, so we corrected to give to have 100, right? So this is your so-called first grade, and you, if you are satisfied with this grade, you receive this grade as a final grade. If uh, you are not, you go to an exam, and the accumulated grade becomes only 60%. Uh, of the final grade and another 30% you receive on the exam. So you can, on your exam, you can increase uh, your grade, but you can also decrease it if you are doing very bad. Right? And also, um, I want to say that uh, you will have not assessed homeworks like today to read uh, papers of a text, uh, chapters of a textbook, and this is not assessed directly, you don't receive directly some points, but obviously you understand that there is a huge indirect impact on your ability to uh, to succeed in, in other tasks. In quizzes, in class participation. No questions? So uh, then let me check the presence very quickly. Alexeyenko, Yulia. No. Uh, Gerasimov, Daniel. No. Klachko, Maxim. No. Uh, but you don't know anything about these people from uh, Vostok of Edinia? No, we you don't, don't know. know. Okay. Okay. Uh, Дышикова Ариана. No, Левинцева Вероника. No, Ткаченко Марк. No, Алексей Фантон. I'm here. No, Афанасьев Кирилл. I'm here. Алексей Фантон is here. Алексей Фантон is here. Афанасьев Кирилл? I'm here. Are you here? I'm here. Булгаков Матвей? I'm here. Yes, Кирилл, yes, you're here. Матвей is here. I'm here. Гарманова Вера? I'm here. Вера? Here. Вера here. Василий Федор? Here. Fyodor? I'm here. Here. Uh, Artemy, Gory Artemy. I'm here. No. 
I'm here. Ignat? Yeah, it's it's very difficult. Could you please, Sonia, call your name? Could you please raise your hand in uh, in uh, in Zoom so that I can I can see you? Uh, Dolgich Nikolai. I'm here. Dolgich Nikolai. I am here. Yeah. Druzhinina uh, Anastasia. I am here. Good. Yergen Kirill. Kirill. No. Zhuchkov Dmitry. I am here. No. Dmitry is here. here. Ivanova Svetlana. Светлана Иванова. No. Исламов Данил. I'm here. No. I'm here. Hello. Hello. Yes, here. Кабаненков Николай. No. Караев Олег. I'm here. Here. Коновалов uh, Владислав. It's me. Hi. I'm here. Uh, Vladislav here. Krasnov Ivan. I'm no. here. I'm here. Where are here? Yes. Uh, Kuzavkova Vladislava. I'm here. Good. Kuchkov Dmitry. Dmitry. No. Katmanov Ivan. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Lashkov Leonid. Here. Lamakin Artemi. I'm here. Where? Here. Okay. Makova Nadezhda. I'm here. Okay. Maxim Tsvanna. I'm here. Good. Mama Atkulov Atabek. Atabek. Here. Atabek, I can't, he uh, I, I can't see you. Yeah, I've raised my hand, but my video is turned off. Okay. Martianov Mikhail. This is me, I'm here. Where? Here. Mironov, Mironov Mikhail. I'm here. Here. Miroshin Piotr. Piotr. No. Petrova Ekaterina. I'm here. Good. Pokrovska Valeria. I'm here. Good. Popov Nikolai. I'm here. Good. Uh, Patikhonov Andrei. Uh, is this me? Very good. Rashupkin Ruslan? Rashupkin Ruslan? I'm here. Where? Here. Good. Sarkisian Karen? It's me. I'm here. Good. Safianov Mikhail? Safianov Mikhail? No. Suslova Maria? No. Tarasova Sofia. Hello, it's me. Who? Where? Raise your hand, please. Uh -huh. Okay, good, thank you. Timofeeva Darya. No. Titov Vladislav. No. Cvetkova Darya. Светкова Дарья. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Якушина Татьяна. Татьяна Якушина. No. I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Here, good. And Пахомова Диана. No. Uh, Ковалевская Евгения. No. Вилла Симоне. I'm here. Вилла Симоне. Here, good. I'm here. Вердис Сальваторе. No. Lee Da Jong? No. Okay. Very good. 
Do you like this online format of, of lectures? Do you like? Yes. Yes? But you have you now have all your uh, lectures online. You you don't have lectures in class. That's right. Okay. Okay, so, so let's start. We don't have much time. So uh, today lecture is about cognitive biases. Let me go uh, very quickly through learning outcomes because in one group we have seen it, in another one, no. Uh, so we'll consider today, we'll consider basic cognitive biases such as availability bias, based direct neglect, on which you had an exercise um, Kruger effects and post fallacy. So, uh, these are uh, how to say uh, most popular cognitive biases. Excuse me, we can hardly understand you because uh, of well your there are internet, maybe. Okay, I'm very sorry. Sometimes my internet connection is not good enough, that's true. Uh, now you can hear me? Now? Yes. Now we can hear yes. now. Okay, good. Uh, so let's hope that it will work. Uh, so, um, why do we... Um, there's some questions in the chat. Uh, Kirill, uh, Kirill Dmitry Kuchkov. Okay, I'll, I will. I will mark your presence. Kuchkov Dmitry. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we need to learn and to understand better basic cognitive biases in order to improve critical thinking skills and in order to be able to predict better human behavior. So, uh, yeah, this is just a statistic sort of a survey that we made during the first lecture. And here there is some heterogeneity in uh, your background, in your knowledge. And uh, let's start with the availability bias concept. Uh, so availability uh, bias is um, a bias that uh, relies on immediate examples that come immediately to your mind when somebody talks to you or, or when thinking by your own about some specific areas, let me uh, your give you an example. last phrase was undistinguishable at all. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I don't know what I can. Let me try. Если выключить камеру, то, возможно, будет звук получше, потому что интернет. Uh, yeah,
let's try okay let's try or switch i will switch off my camera is it better this way can you hear me can you hear me properly yes um, so uh, let's start with an availability bars availability bars it's uh, a bias that uh, relies on immediate examples that come to person mind when this person is trying to to evaluate some specific topic concept matter or decision. Uh, to demonstrate this bias, uh, there is an example from famous Tversky Kahneman paper that I will ask you to read at some point, probably next week or the week after. Kirill um, Afanasyev. If a random uh, Kirill, yeah, thank uh, do you yeah. speak English? Yeah. Do you speak English? Yes. <laughs> Is it your native language? Is it your native no. language? English? Very good. So, please answer the question. If a random word is taken from an English test, text, is it more likely that this word starts with R or that R is a third letter? I think uh, the second. I don't know. Why do you think so? Um, uh, Nikolai? And Nikolai Popov, and what do you think? Uh, well, uh, to fully answer this question, uh, we should uh, know the amount of words starting uh, with R and have R in uh, the th third position. But uh, if we don't know that, uh, we can't uh, distinguish those two cases. So I believe it's 50-50. <laughs> You believe it's 50 50. And Tatiana, and what is your guess? Tatiana Ikushina. I suppose that um, there are more words with R on the third place. It's just a guess. Because I was looking could at the slide. Give, could, could you give me an example of five English words uh, well, where R is the third letter? Um, three, air, um, word. Um, what else? Car, mm -hmm. um, street. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Um, well, so uh, yeah, so the availability bias says uh, usually people uh, answer to this question that uh, there are much more uh, words that start with an, uh, a letter R. Uh, because it's easier to find examples of such words. And uh, so, but, but the correct answer is that there are much more words that, that where R is a third letter. However, uh, a person should uh, take uh, a more concentrated effort to think of the words that start with R that to think of the words that, that uh, uh, sorry, uh, to, to think, uh, uh, it, it's more difficult to think about words where R is a third letter than to, that to think about uh, words that starts with R. And uh, this is an example of availability bias. So what is available, uh, you are students, for you it's different, you are students, you, you used to think uh, hardly and to be concentrated all the time. But usual people, when you ask this question, they will answer, most of them will answer that, uh, will answer that there are more words that start with so R, because it's easier to find examples of these words. Another example that I have on my slide, uh, also famous example that you find in any textbook of behavioral economics, um, what is the probability um, or, 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 or the probability from dying from shark attacks is higher or from falling airplane parts? Tatiana, what do you think?
I will guess that it's the second one. From Falling and, Airplane and, Parts. And no, the first one. The first oh, one okay. I'm not sure. Parts. I don't even know the information about this, but let it be the first one. Vladislav? Vladislav? I suggest that it is more probabilistic to die from a shark attacks than from falling airplane parts. It's Why? Um, I just I just uh, suppose, however, however, the airplane catastrophes are rare um, situations. However, the shark attacks is very common in in the south uh, uh, south countries. Okay, very good, Vladislav. And why do you think uh, that it's uh, more uh, that there is a high probability dying from shark attacks? Why? How how did you collect this information? Just uh, answer. How do you think? Um, honestly, honestly, I don't know how to what to add uh, to my speech. However, okay, good. Okay, thank you, Daria. You have to add something, right? Uh, yes, I I wanted to say that uh, I think that uh, it's vice versa. So. Uh, dying from falling airplane parts is in fact more common only uh, probably shark attacks are kind of inflated by the news mm -hmm. and uh, I mean uh, is it implied that uh, dying from falling airplane parts meaning uh, being in that airplane or like the, the plane fell on top of you yeah, okay, Daria, thank you very much. Yeah, well, so, that, that uh, was a, a question. That, yeah, that I, will answer, I will answer this All question. Right. We have very good, very good replies of Daria and, and Vladislav. That's exactly what I, I, I was expected. So, uh, Vla, uh, many people, as Vladislav said, uh, think that dying from shark attacks is uh, greater the, the probability of dying from shark attacks is, is higher than the dying uh, from uh, falling airplane parts uh, because it's uh, widely reported uh, everywhere as uh, as Daria uh, mentioned it's widely reported in the media uh, this story with shark attacks that happen probably not in, uh, in, in our part of the world, but, but in others. And uh, the situation of dying uh, from falling airplane parts is very rarely reported in the media, you see? And uh, the statistics says, if you collect statistics, if you're doing research and collect statistics, the statistics says that uh, it's the probability of dying from falling airplane parts is much higher than dying from shark attacks. However, when you ask people um, how their brain works, the person uh, starts to think, to find, to search, uh, to search in uh, in uh, his past, in in what he he was uh, hurt, uh, the situation of dying from shark attacks and dying from airplane parts. And given that. There is a lot of information in the media about the first one. The person uh, finds this information in, in his memory and he, he thinks, uh, okay, well, yeah, I heard about it many times and I never heard about uh, uh, dying from airplane parts and I heard many times about dying from shock attacks. That's why I reply uh, that the probability of dying from shock attacks is, uh, is higher. Yeah, there is a problem here that in 10 minutes we uh, uh, we have, yeah, if you can just reconnect reconnect when the time is over, okay? Um, and uh, what is um, the policy implication of uh, availability bias? Kirill, do you have an idea? 
Why should we care about availability bias? I think uh, we should care about uh, this because uh, we may um, make wrong decisions uh, when we do business, for example, and that may uh, impact on uh, our profits or profits of business. And could you give a specific example? A specific example of how we can manipulate people's mind uh, with the availability bias. Uh, we may uh, uh, make uh, people afraid of, for example, terrorist attacks, uh, for example, uh, and um, um, spend. So, for example, if uh, we are the government, we may spend uh, many, many money for. Uh, some uh, that's called the uh, theater of uh, security of um, theater of safety um, but uh, this uh, wouldn't help to save life from uh, terrorist attacks but uh, have uh, if we have the media we can um, affect uh, the people's minds that terrorist attacks are common and we need to spend money on it Okay, I see. Other examples: how we can how we can manipulate and control uh, people's mind, uh, taking into account this availability bias shortcast. Uh, other examples? Well, I think I can provide some example. Uh, raise your hand, please. So, yeah. Okay. A moment. And I will turn on my video. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe some not very honest insurance company can say that you know many people die from a plane falling, and maybe make people to buy some insurance that in real case is not very. Hmm, have not very high probability to be paid. So maybe the example with the um, airplane was not very correct, but I think that other similar cases can be. Yeah, clear. I didn't. I didn't understand your example with airplane. So that's a uh, that's another way around. So if you convince people that the probability, so you want to convince people that the probability you should. You should be willing to convince that your probability is higher than it is in order to make them to buy more insurances, right? Yes. yes. And use that, that is lower. No, I'm yeah, not what mean kind that of it's lower. Mean? Well. I'm not sure what kind of insurance, but well, it can be any type, I think. So the mm, the main point of the case is that some not honest companies can manipulate that bias in order to make people believe that some events are more probabilistic to have higher prob probability to happen in order to make them buy the insurance. Okay, I see. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, let's continue. Uh, can you still hear me? Can you hear me properly? Yes, good. Yes. So, uh, this is an example that we had last time. Um, this is the problem that, that I like a lot. So, uh, let's, um, uh, let's have a look once again. So, we have the machine the brief analyzer, uh, and we know that this uh, brief analyzer regi re register false drunkness in 5% of the cases when the driver is sober. So you take a driver who is sober, and there is an error of 5%. And it's never failed to detect a truly drunk person. Then uh, the trick uh, of this problem is this information. 
This is crucial information for this problem. One in a thousand drivers is driving drunk. And then when you compute the probability uh, of being drunk if you are detected, if uh, the brief analyzer detects you, we see that this probability we have only one person true positive because this is given this is given in the problem this one right and then we have uh we have five percent of others and the probability is really small so the probability is only two percent but if you ask uh like uh, normal people just on the street if you tell them this problem many of them would answer that the probability is 95%. You see? You see? Why they answer this? Because they don't know there are this information, how many people are uh, driving drunk in, in the reality. Uh, and, and this is a really tricky thing because we don't know if you are a police officer you uh, don't really know uh, how many people are driving drunk and you have this machine in order to detect this, in order to find this out. And imagine now, to, uh, to, to give you a feeling of this problem, now imagine that it's not one of the thousand drivers driving drunk, but let's say 100 drivers is driving drunk. And then we have 100 divided by uh, 150 so it's about uh, yeah it's about 65 percent do you see the difference the difference is huge so the information uh the crucial information in this one and uh, if we don't know this uh we uh can make very wrong predictions like uh, with uh, these brief analyzers, if you're a police officer, if you stop it, if you know that nobody, one of a thousand, it's pretty nobody. So if you uh, find this drunkenness, it's much higher that this is the error than that the person is truly drunk. You see? And there is another, another uh, problem that I gave you as a homework. Did you do it, Ruslan? Yes, I have done it. Could you explain it to the audience? <clears throat> so, uh, imagine running an infection disease testing population A of 1,000 persons in which 40% are infect infected. The test has a false positive rate of 5% and no positive, false negative rate. Everybody gets the test. So, compute the number of people who are true positive uh, which is simply 40% multiplied by 1,000, right? 400? Yes. Am, am I right? Yeah. Another slide, it will be easier for you. Which is, uh, <clears throat> it will be easier for you to... to uh -huh. Compute the number of people who are false positive. Uh, it is 5% uh, multiplied by 1,000, which is 50, right? Oh, no, it's it's 30. Uh, and that is why, bec oh, yeah, because it's, uh, wait, false positive. So the test says that they are ill, but they are not. Uh, uh, What's the rate? 5%. Yeah. Yeah. So,
I realized the solution for the second uh, task. So uh, it's 50, yeah, but only 60% uh, of people uh, among these 50 uh, are uh, false positive. That is 30, like 50 okay. multiplied by 3 divided by 5. And the probability of being positive if you're tested positive. Uh, so it's 400, like uh, the, it's, uh, let me calculate first. It's 30 divided by 400 plus 30, right? Oh no, it's 400. Yeah, it's 400 divided by the sum of uh, false positive and true positive. So it's 400 divided by 430. Yeah. 93%. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And, yes, right. Uh, yeah, Ruslan, so uh, the probability of being positive if you are tested positive, in this case we computed, is uh, 93%. Mm -hmm. Now consider the situation, the same problem, but a low incidence population where, uh, so here there are 40% who are infected, and here there are only 2% who are infected. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. And mm -hmm. all... Uh, uh, is the same. The false positive rate is 5% and no false negative rate. How do you compute um, the probability? The probability of being positive if you are tested positive? Yes, the probability of being positive if you are tested positive. Uh, so it's the we same. Have we, ha same we have to take all the true positive and divide it by the sum, but uh, now the true positive will be the uh, significantly low uh, mm -hmm. if we compare it with the false positive and that's why mm -hmm. the error is uh, like too too decent to calculate, calculate the correct number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you Ruslan. So that's the point. This is the same idea that we have seen with uh, the example of, uh, of uh, drunk drivers. So if there are uh, very small, if there is a very small, uh, very low uh, proportion of people who are truly positive and there is a false positive rate high enough so 5% is, is it seems to be not so high but if you test everybody and uh, the whole population and there are very low proportion of, who are, uh, of people who are infected then uh, the majority of tested positive is, is false positive and not truly infected, you know? And this is the tree. So if a proportion of, um, if the share of infected is high enough in the population, then this error is, um, this error is, is low uh, compared to, to, to the true number of infected. However, if the proportion of people is low, then the, this error of 5% um, is, is much higher. So, so everybody who started, most people who are tested positive, they're tested positive because of the error of the tested, not because, yeah. because of, um, of being uh, infected. You see? So this is the exercise that, that you have to think about. And uh, this is called base jet neglect. So what do I neglect? In uh, in these uh, excuse in me these examples, Anton. Uh, can you explain, please, uh, uh, wh why uh, is uh, false positive is equal thirty, not uh, fifty? Because, in the first uh, example. Yeah, because false positive is uh, the number of people who are not uh, uh, who are not infected, six hundred, right? So the false positive is relevant only for people who are not infected. And in our problem, there are 600 people who are not infected. Ah, I see. Thank you. And then we take 5% of 600. Right? So, 
um, now um, uh, questions uh, what information do we neglect what information do we ignore in these uh, situations let's come back to uh, to the first problem of drunk driver these people who uh, answer 95 percent what information do they neglect can i Fyodor, Ruslan. Uh, yeah, let's they, start with Fyodor and Ruslan will answer to, to it. They the neglect uh, the base rate of uh, uh, drunk and driving. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is important because uh, uh, the base rate uh, it, it is the real rate and uh, uh, it uh, affects uh, uh, how light, likely it is uh, uh, to be actually drunk when you pass the, 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 the death. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Fyodor. Uh, Ruslan, what information uh, do people neglect in the second example? Uh, these people who answer that it's 95%? Uh, yes, 95%, yes. Uh, like the infection situation? Or what the second example? This one that we have just uh, seen. Yeah, sorry. This one. Low is incidence population. Uh, yeah, both. Yeah, just the proportion of uh, people who are truly infected and uh, uh, the, the the proportion, yeah, who are infected or not. Yeah. So, uh, in this, uh, I gave you two different examples to demonstrate you that uh, in both examples, this high incidence population, low incidence population, uh, most people will think that given that the false positive rate is 5%, then uh, the probability of being positive if you are tested positive is 95. Many people, you can test it, you can go to Trodnaklasniki or to, to, to what you use and make the survey and you will see that many people will answer 95%. While in this case, it's not so different because in this case, the real is 93 and you also 95, and it's, it's not so different. But here, it's only 29, while it appears to be 95. You see? And this is a big difference here. Okay, let's continue. Let's try to be uh, more effective. Because, yeah, and so what, uh, what is the correct, again, as I said at the very beginning, I, I don't want to say that if if we um, if we uh, all these cognitive viruses, it's it's not incorrect. It's just how things are. It's how our brain works, and we have to take into into consideration if we want to manipulate people around us. We uh, we have to take into in, into consideration, and we have to integrate uh, all the information that we have in order to uh, make correct predictions. Let's continue with endowment effect. I'm sure that you uh, you know this and you have heard about it. So there is a very uh, very popular example uh, by Daniel Kahneman in the same paper that you will be supposed to, to read. There is a very simple experiment. Um, participant participants of the experiment received a mug a mug. And um, they were offered to trade this mark for, for something else. And it had been found that people asked um, a higher compensation for the mark if uh, they were firstly offered this mark, then they were ready uh, to, uh, to, to give a way in order to buy this mark. And the difference, were, uh, the difference was approximately, uh, to, the difference was two, two times. You see? So this is a very simple idea. So if you already have something, imagine it. 
you give to this object that belongs to you. Uh, ca can you still hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Good. Because I receive uh, a message on my screen that my connection is not good. Uh, yeah. So if if some object belongs to you, you uh, tend to give more utility to this object. Uh, and if you want to buy something, you tend to give less utility to this object and you are willing to pay less to, uh, to buy the, this thing. And in behavioral economics, uh, this term was introduced only, only about 60 years ago, but uh, this term of endowment effect. Uh, however, people observed this effect much early. And I gave on this slide, I gave you a citation from Aristotle. For most things are differently valued by those who have them and by those who wish to get them. Or it seems very precious to us. Uh, do do you see uh, do you see this idea? Can anybody give me uh, give me an example of of how this endowment effect affected your decisions uh, in your life? I want some example, Daria, please. Well, uh, I think that uh, probably. The fact that that I earned uh, some uh, diplomas from HSC uh, probably led to me valuing them over much probably, and uh, may affect may have affected my decision to study here. Well, it's not a literal example, uh, but I can give another one: uh, the return policies in. My, different shops that you can return the product mm -hmm. within 30 days uh, mm -hmm. are designed with endowment effect in mind. Uh, so people who get their, like some items or clothes or something, uh, they are in fact less likely to return them than if they were perfectly rational. Uh, people who buy some clothes, they're less likely to return them. Why? Well, uh, yes. Uh, like I, I'm saying that the shops are not afraid to let them return them because ah, once okay. they have them uh, in their possession, they won't. Yeah, I see. This is a good example. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, sunk cost. Uh, so sunk cost, by definition, uh, is a cost. It shouldn't be necessary only money. When you think about cost in economics, it's not only money. It's your time, your energy, your emotions, whatever. Uh, that has already been incurred by you and cannot be recovered. So this is the definition of sunk cost. And sunk cost fallacy is uh, the situation when uh, the cost made in the past uh, are still remain still uh, and cannot be recovered. Uh, they shouldn't be relevant for decisions about the future. Even if you made a mistake and you bought something that you don't need, but it is. And many people uh, behave this way and think this way uh, and, and take into consideration previous expenditures that are no longer relevant uh, for their future decisions. And I have some bullet points uh, on my slide to, uh, to demonstrate you uh, these uh, examples. For example, you paid a ticket for, for a football match and this ticket is not reimbursable, so, so, so you cannot uh, return money for this. And then a freak uh, snowstorm starts and you have to drive away and while you're making a decision to go there or not, uh, the 
correct, let's say correct way, is, is to estimate the probability that you have an accident and uh, what and that probability is high enough, but people think another way. They think, okay, but I have already bought a ticket, and if I did, I have to go, you know? And that's called sun cost fallacy. And yeah, and it, I can say that it happened with me for uh, last year as well. You remember when uh, all the borders were closed because of, uh, of uh, so-called pandemic. And I bought a green card for my car for the whole year. And I couldn't, uh, I couldn't go um, to, to, to the place where I planned to go. And then when the border was finally open, I decided that I have to go to somewhere in order to, you know, to use this insurance. That is uh, not very intelligent uh, way of thinking. But this is how, uh, how many pe people uh, think. So they think if they invested already some resources, money, time, energy, emotions, uh, they want, they, they are willing to receive uh, you know, to receive something in return for this. Um, yeah. So I, I want a couple of your examples, please, for sun cost fallacy. Tatiana? Well, for example, when you do a science project and you collect data by hand, you spend a lot of time, but when you collect it and you understand that it's not representative, but you really want to use the data you collected because you spent a lot of time, money, but the outcome of a science project would be wouldn't be relevant in real yeah this is a good example yeah thank you andre uh, i don't know but i guess that casinos uh, should work on this scheme you invested some money in this casino and you think that you will return it back and continue to play casino uh yeah probably so, yeah so yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah so you have to... already you continue to lose and to lose and to lose, but you still yeah. believe that. But yeah. I wanted to ask: Don't you think that if you invest some time in a book or theater or football, you should take all exa uh, your experience from this, not because uh, you didn't <laughs> you invested uh, some resources in it, but because uh, uh, you can have an opinion on the book or on the because you can have what? Uh, you can have your own opinion on some something. Or for example, in, on the show, on the, which mm -hmm. you buy a ticket. Only after the end of the show, not in the middle of it. Uh, yes, yes. But I'm saying that uh, you're referring to, to this example, right? About books. Oh, like this, yeah, yeah. Uh, I always end it there. Yes, you you are you are right. So uh, <laughs> the uh, people might uh, oh, uh, think that yeah. <laughs> somebody with somebody is uh, saying something or not? No. Uh, so here the idea is that. Um, when you uh, read half of the book and you realize that you're not enjoying this, you might think that, okay, probably something interesting will be go at the end, or even if I don't enjoy reading the book, I still want to finish it in order to, in order to know it, in order to be able to discuss it, right? This thing. So if, um, if uh, you're thinking this way, it's not some cost, some, some cost fallacy. But if you are thinking another way, like I don't enjoy reading this book, but I have already bought it and I have to finish it, this is a some, some cost fallacy. Okay. okay, this is to, to, this is a very nuanced thing. So, yeah. Do you see my point, Andre? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So uh, then let's continue. We have two, uh, two cognitive biases to, to consider today. Um, 
the Dunning Kruger effect um, or overconfidence. Sometimes people uh, refer to these two effects as different effects, but for me, it's 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 pretty the same. So the Dunning Kruger effect. There are two scientists, Dunning and Kruger, who who revealed it. Is a cognitive biases saying that uh, people with low ability try to overestimate their ability. You know, there are many examples that you, you can give me in, in, in during your studies, like you always, students always overestimate the ability to, I don't know, to, to, to speak English, for example, they believe that they speak it much better than they do, or they do uh, exercise in mathematics my, much better than that they do in the reality. Uh, so the Tani Kruger effect refers only to people with low ability, because this was the experiment that Dunning and Kruger uh, made, conducted. Uh, and overconfidence is for general population. You know, it's not, uh, it's not necessary uh, for people with low ability, also for high ability as well. It's uh, the idea that people tend to, uh, to, under, to, uh, to overestimate their ability. Uh, Ruslan, you have a question? Uh, no, actually, an example. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so there was a survey in the USA, and the teachers were asked uh, whether they uh, are, whether their level of teaching uh, are high or low, and the 90% 90 of uh, teachers said that they think that the uh, teaching ability is above average. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ninety percent said that. Yeah. No, like. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's not possible because yeah. 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 Thank you, Karen. You want to add something? Yeah, uh, I can provide one more example. It's like yeah, more ahead. classic one about drivers, uh, mm -hmm. because um, uh, I don't remember in which country, but there were a survey uh, among drivers about their. Uh, level of driving and uh, more than half of um, uh, people uh, say that uh, their level is higher than average and mm -hmm. this is uh, uh, it, it can be true too so it's level of overestimating abilities mm -hmm. yeah thank you andre you want to 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 add something i think it's more of an uh, <laughs> Okay, it's this effect working in every game, like uh, Dota 2 or uh, I guess Go or football. Every player thinks that he's excellent. But, uh, yeah. But the yeah. We are all overconfident um, about, uh, about our abilities, about our knowledge, about everything. And this is, in fact, this is, uh, this is very easy to measure these effects. You know, you just take people, you make some tests with them to measure their ability, uh, like, I don't know, whatever, driving or economics, mathematics, languages, you measure uh, their abilities, then you ask them to, to answer how they're confident about their ability, and then you compare their opinion with their reality. So this is very easy to replicate. And you can do it, for example, if you want. Uh, somebody, Anton, you're willing to add something? Uh, yes, I have one more example of uh, dying Kruger effect. Yeah, uh, I think uh, it's well known fact that uh, taxi drivers uh, are professional politicians and economists, and they know everything about these spheres. So. Uh, it's uh, very tough to argue with them because these people cannot understand that uh, uh, they don't have special uh, knowledge uh, in these spheres and uh, um, their um, uh, thoughts about uh, this um, are not uh, professional. And uh, I could. Yeah, Anton, yeah, thank you very much for, for your comment. It, it's very relevant, and that's true that people, especially if, if people are experts in, in something, they, they tend to, to, 
to overestimate much more their, their knowledge and their the level of their expertise. And it, um, it's important for human relationships because, because yeah, sometimes it, it's hard to, to, to deal with uh, this kind of people. Yeah, it, it's a very relevant comment. Thank you. Uh, uh, Ruslan Daniel? You want to add something? Yes, I can add another example when people can no. make okay. profit from such an <laughs> well may or will go further. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, and now I can, but previously I couldn't. C could you repeat, or please? Yeah, I can provide another example when people can make profit from such an effect. So I think that different attractions such as shooting galleries or you know that some sort of darts games on different celebrations can use such a bias when people think that they are too they're pretty good at maybe shooting or controlling their the balance, let's say, for example. And so they pay to, to win some, some sort of prize, but the vast majority of them fail. So I think this is an illustration okay. of side bias. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's continue. We have only 10 minutes remaining, and there is one exercise that I want to do with you. You know, what I want to do, I want to send two different links. So I want to send one link to, to half of a group and another link to another half of a group. Do you have an idea how to do it? So my, the only one idea that I have, uh, I don't know how to do it in Zoom. I can mm -hmm. send to one group to 91 group, I sent in one link by email. Uh, do you have access to, to your emails, right? And to another group, to 92 group, I sent another link. This is a link with a very short exercise that, that you, uh, you are supposed to do. Can we do it? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, we can do it. Okay, okay so, so please check your email. I will send you, you the link. I will send you two different links to two different groups. Um. Okay, done for, for the first group, 91. Did you receive it? Can you open it? Can you open it? Is it okay? Well, I don't see any letters. I'll do email. And now to the second group, 92. T t please tell me if you can open the link if, um, if everything is okay. Uh, the first group received it. Mm -hmm. And the second? Not yet. Not yet. And now? So where is Oh yeah. Did we get, get it? it? Yep. Ah. Okay. We should just answer. Th yes, just answer. Yes. Okay.
Okay. And what is it? Uh, option one, the third question. It has only untitled question and only one option. Untitled question? Yes, the third one. We have ah. only two questions. Our yes. Group. Uh, why untitled? Uh, can you share your uh, can you share your screen because here it's... I can send a screenshot it will be better yeah please do it okay uh, okay just a second you send it to the chat here in zoom right I think this question uh, was made um, uh, accidentally. And, uh, uh, please send me the screenshot because here I see everything um, written properly. I don't understand. Okay, just just a second. I have sent it. Mm. I can't open it. So just uh, something went wrong with the last question, but it. Uh... Yeah, sorry, but I can't open it. Yeah. Okay, but I don't think that it could be a serious problem because the questions are alike. So. Okay, so let's. Um, we have only uh, six minutes in Zoom. Let's. Uh, start this discussion and if we don't have time we continue we continue on Tuesday so let me share my screen again um, yeah just it should be like this you know can you see it so for one group this this is what you had or not yes this is and what we had and what is the problem here? Uh, there is the third question and it is empty. Ah, uh, okay, yes. yeah, sorry. No, it's, yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, sorry, I didn't understand from the, uh, the beginning. Okay, yeah, it's, you shouldn't uh, answer to this. Um, okay, so um, let me share now a screen. This one. So you have, you have two different problems. Problem one, in addition to whatever you own, one group ha had uh, the first question. In addition to whatever you own, you have been given 1,000 euros. You are now asked to choose between A, B, a 50% chance of winning another uh, 1,200 for sure. You see? And uh, another group received another version of this problem you have been given 2000 euros you are now asked to choose between and 50 percent chance of losing 1000 and losing 500 for sure uh you could see Tell us something about the. Can, can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes. No, we can, but it's a bad connection. Uh, Yekaterina, can you tell us something about these two problems? About what? Mikhail? 
Uh, Екатерина, can you? About what? I, I, I about two, about uh, two versions of problem one. Um, I think that uh, they are similar because uh, in the ex uh, expected value of first is the same uh, like in the B. The expected value was yeah, exactly. The expected value is yeah. Thank you, Katerina. Expected value is a very good point. So you can see that the expected value is the same. So you have one thousand, and you receive one more thousand uh, with a probability of fifty percent. And here you have two thousand and for probability of fifty percent, you lose one thousand. So the expected value of A and C is the same. 1,500 and the expected value of B and D is the same as well. You see? Uh, here, the as and disease problem, this is the same. This is just formulated in a different way. If program A is adopted, 200 people will be safe. Uh, and if program C is adopted, Uh, 400 people will die. But given that in total population, uh, this is the same, just framed differently. 200 saved and 400 die. It's just framed differently, but this is the same. And people, the idea of, uh, of this cognitive virus is this. Uh, people respond differently uh, to, the, to this different way, and I don't want to connect to them again. So uh, let me, I will send you the slides, and I ask you to think, to, to check the slides and to think about this. It's called prospect theory or certainty effect. This is, uh, okay, we will start with this next time. And uh, your homework, your homework for next Tuesday is to read uh, the two chapters, chapter two, rational choice under certainty, and chapter three, rational choice under certainty. You just read these chapters, and next time on Tuesday, I will, prefer, uh, I will prepare a problem set based on these two chapters, and we will work on this problem set in class. And this uh, homework is not assessed, but your results in class will be assessed. And also in class, we will have a short quiz on uh, three minutes, five minutes on cognitive biases, on the material that we have studied today. Okay, any questions? Excuse me, uh, you have sent us only the second uh, chapter. If, I will, yeah. If right. Uh, crap.